Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Binamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, May 15th, 2020. And this is our weekly video. As always, we take a look back and see how things did on eBay, Catawiki, what's happening over on the global member pages with auction houses around the world uh, that are up on li invaluable live auctioneers, Christie's, Sotheby's, Bonhams, and all those other sites. And it's been sort of an interesting week. A couple of things I wanted to go over before we get into uh, the regular stuff is that uh, first, uh, we, did a, we did a video and a blog this week uh, for our friend Rob Michaels over in Belgium, at, in Bruges. Uh, he's got a nice sale coming up starting on May 20th. 26th and running on the 27th is about 710 lots uh, some very good Chinese stuff and some good Japanese material and uh, we covered uh, quite a bit of it in the video the video was around uh, I think 40 minutes long or something and uh, on the blog we've highlighted uh, on the on the bit amount page we've highlighted some of the lots that we thought looked quite attractive and there's a link there uh, to take you right over to uh, um, live auctioneers to uh, check out the uh, offerings themselves directly all right. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was there was a sale that closed in um, uh, Australia this week that Christie's ran, and the results were quite encouraging. They were very good, actually. Uh, a number of things went over their estimates. Uh, there seemed to be a lot of interest and participation, and and, and I think uh, uh, it, it bodes well for the market, despite all the, all the conflict and things that are going on right now that we're all well aware of. The other thing I wanted to mention was that Christie's also has another online sale that is now on their page on the site, on the uh, global member pages. Um, uh, here it is, uh, of Chinese porcelain. Uh, starting on uh, May 21st, running through the 26th or the 27th, you'll have to check it out. Uh, but it's they're on the global pages, and there's a number of pretty good things. There's some nice jades. It's not a huge sale, about 100 lots or so, but uh, good-looking things, and uh, it, it's worth checking out. And I think you're you're, you're going to find some things in there you might be able to make some some money on if you're a dealer. You never know. It's always worth checking. All righty. And uh, that's about it. We did have, oh, incidentally, in case you were wondering, on the Catawiki section of the site on Friday for a couple days, the images weren't all displaying for some reason on the uh, lower half of the newsletter page. And it turns out that they had made a couple of minor changes on their site that impacted our, uh, our parsers that pull up images. So we had to do a little cha few changes on, on Monday, and it was, it was all set. But uh, we, had, we needed to get some information to, in order to complete it, and we did, and it was done very quickly, happily. All righty. So let's take a look and see what happened over on uh, eBay last week in Catawiki. It was a pretty good week. There wasn't a lot of stuff up. It was a little bit quiet, uh, but there's, I noticed this week um, we went through some things this morning, and there are a number of more, more and more things are now we're starting to come back on uh, uh uh, eBay, especially in the U.S., and I think the EU will be coming along shortly. Uh, Chamberlain Antiques has, has a sale up right now that we've got uh, that will be in the newsletter page this week. So uh, if, you, if you're not a subscriber, you've got to sign up for it because we, we notify everybody when the page is updated each Friday. You can go straight to it. The other stuff that uh, sold last week that was sort of interesting, if you like Japanese material, um, over on the unreserved lots that we take, we, we pull in from uh, Katowiki was this. It was a nice Japanese Takuri, uh, you know, a wine bottle, sake bottle, Imari, done uh, in the Meiji period, but very well done, nice shape to it, good looking and in good condition. And uh, somebody got a very nice buy on it. It went for 109 euros. That's a good buy for that. It has a, had the Fuku mark on the bottom, which uh, you all expect to see. Um, right there, and um, classic sort of uh, decoration, and uh, that was a good buy. The other thing that was, I think, was a very nice buy was this Japanese uh, Arita plate, 18th century, but early 18th century of a heron, uh, sort of cartoonishly drawn with pine trees around the cavetto and the rim, but nice decoration, uh, well done. Uh, we'll get around to the back of it. There it is, and that's the, the back of it, with how they did the script and so forth in the earlier 18th century on these Arita pieces. Somebody got a nice buy, 115 euros for that, quite charming, and, and as you notice, it's very similar to the uh, Chinese export, whereas the tin chi wares there were sent to Japan, which influenced the taste, and the Japanese began producing them as well um, for quite a while in, in the Arita area especially. 
All right, now on to this. This was a, a, a really nice uh, uh, ivory uh, Shibayama example that was on uh, Katawiki. A beautiful example, low relief carving, uh, nice uh, gilt metal work on it with a pair of ivory birds on top. Beautifully, beautifully done. Mother of pearl inlay. This was a nice, nice thing. And uh, Here's some details of it. You can get a real sense of, uh, of the quality of the work on here. The carving in the ivory was just exceptional, just exceptional. And it appeared to be in wonderful condition. And I think somebody got a very decent buy on this. 951 euros. This was an unreserved lot. And uh, it did just fine. But um, uh, 951 euros for this, I think, is very reasonable. It was an attractive object. And it was about uh, seven or eight inches tall. So it was decent size for one of these. All right, good, good on them. And then this, the hookah base, Kung Shi period hookah base, had an old restoration to the top, to the rim, but uh, these were made primarily for export uh, into, uh, a lot of them were sent into India, Southeast Asia, and uh, some into the Middle East. But a, a, a very nice example with uh, enamels and underglaze blue. And uh, look at this, somebody picked it up for 282 euros against a 550 to 650 euro estimate. I thought the estimate on that was quite reasonable, given what it is. These are fairly rare. And uh, somebody picked it up for half. As I, you know, everybody knows what I'm going to say. Leave a bid, all right, if there's something you want. Because I think some of you are probably wishing you'd bought that. There's the picture of the bottom of it. Very classic Kung Shi uh, period uh, base, uh, shape of the foot, the uh, artisma leaf, and the iron red and so forth. That was a good buy. I like that. That was a nice buy. And uh, on to this, a pair of Kung Shi dishes. Um, the boys and then precious objects and scrolls around the outer edge. These plates were about uh, around uh, seven, seven or eight inches in diameter each. One of them had a hairline, minor issues, but somebody picked up the pair for $132. Again, unreserved um, over on uh, Katawiki. That was a good buy. I, I think somebody will take those, sell them separately, and uh, uh, or keep one and sell one and probably end up owning the second for almost nothing. It was a good way to, a good, a good purchase. Very good. And then on to this. This Republic vase um, was up a couple of weeks ago, and evidently it didn't get paid for because it was relisted, and it did very well. It brought around $5,000, and this time around it brought $5,000 again, which is gratifying to see because sometimes, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes people say, oh, why is it back? I'm not going to bid on it and so forth. Well, people got smart, and uh, off it went for $5,100 the second time. That's, that's perfectly good. And then over here for these, these were nice. I like 18th century enamels on copper. And uh, this was a nice pair, uh, sort of a, a, a farmer landscape seeing a boy playing a flute on, a, on an ox and uh, nice mountains in the background and, and that very typical uh, outer rim with this, these dark enamels. And as, and as most of uh, these enamel pieces have, it had these cracks in it. These cracks are formed because the copper gets bent a little bit and it causes the, because it's not on porcelain, it's not that rigid, it, it bends and it causes the uh, enamel to open a, a slight crack. And then over time, the cracks just color from dirt and environmental issues. And it's very typical on these. Here's a picture of the back. It had some losses on the back and so forth. These went through Sotheby's apparently. And uh, they went for $141, which is perfectly fine because the fronts of them looked okay. The, the, I suspect that the uh, chipping off the back was due for the, for the same reason as the, li the little lines on the front, the little bending, and, and the enamel just falls off. But uh, these were attractive. And uh, how about size were they? Do they give the measurement? Uh, 10 centimeters in diameter, so about four inches wide, about right for the typical for those. They did, did them bigger, but not all that often. And then on to this, this very nice barb-rimmed um, Long Quan Kiln Ming Dynasty Celadon uh, sort of shallow bowl. It's a well-known type. It has the incised decoration around the rim and cavetto, and then, and then you have this sort of cluster of flowers in the middle surrounded by lotuses, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought $2,442, and uh, part of that was that it was a nice size, and the center of it wasn't all worn down. We've talked about that before. Sometimes these old Ming dishes, they get wear in the center because they were used heavily, and they were used often because they were very heavy stuff pieces of porcelain and uh, if the enamels wear in the middle it, it does tend to impact the value and uh, this plate was 28 centimeters in diameter it was a nice size uh, just a, about uh, about nine inches good looking plate all right and then over here to the grisaille decorated 18th century Chinese export 
uh, European marketware uh, uh, tray, uh, small tray. These are little, but the decoration on it was very good and in quite good condition and it had no cracks or anything like that. It had minor bits of little tiny bits of edgeware here and there, but nothing noticeable. Uh, and uh, as I said, the grisaille on it was still in very good condition along with the gilding because gilding and grisaille are very susceptible to wear. And uh, this did fine. It brought $284. Uh, grisaille is an interesting collector category. A lot of people, that's all they collect are grisaille decorated European landscapes. And uh, this was a nice one, rather attractive. And uh, then on to this, the uh, Keki Amon uh, uh, decorated, or decorated style. It's Meiji period, done in the Khaki Amon manner with the brown dressing rim and these very soft uh, enamels and so forth. But a very well done example, and it's done in a very classic Khaki Amon pattern with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the tree baskets and so forth and the pine trees and the ascending uh, ho-ho bird. Uh, and if you look at the back of it, uh, here's some. They they provided some very good detail shots of this. The blue the blue overglaze enamels were really nice. But when you look at the back of it, you know right away it's a Meiji dish because the back of it is in in in, in fine Meiji fashion, extremely precisely done, very neat, very tidy, and has this nice. You know you know it's Japanese because it's. If sometimes uh, people say, well, how do I know it's Chinese or Japanese? When you see a dish like this with a single line out close to the foot rim, it's it's 99.999 percent of the time Japanese. And uh, this, this went reasonably for $308. It was a nice example, and it was good size. Okay, uh, about nine inches in diameter. And then there was another good earlier uh, piece of uh, uh, Amari, uh, Japanese. This is from the cell, same cell. This is from ceramics and collectibles. No, known on other sites, uh, Shangri-La uh, Antiques over in the Netherlands. They're good dealers, two guys. They run a heck of a good business. And uh, this was a very, very attractive piece. Nice underglazed blue decoration, willow trees, and all that good business. And um, this was an extremely reasonable buy. $79 US, okay? Uh, that, was a, that, was a, that was a bargain. This was an 18th century dish, early part of the 18th century, and uh, bravo, whoever grabbed that. All right, and then on to this, the uh, enamel decorated basin, uh, late Qing Republic period, but well decorated, very pretty. As you recall, a few a uh, month or two ago, there was a pair of these that came up that were uh, Quanjan ware and had script on them. Um, and these are these are related in the same form. Uh, it was a popular form at the time. These were often made in pairs for plants and so forth, and um, it brought uh, fifteen hundred and ninety-one dollars. Very nicely done. It was Guangxu, uh, obviously, and, and had no mark. All right, and then over to this, this uh, armorial Chinese export plate. This plate was in such good condition, I really had to look at it carefully before we put it in because I thought, wow. And then I saw the label of the dealer who sold it, and it made total sense why it was in such great condition. Uh, this was sold by the Chinese Porcelain Company in New York, run by Khalil Risk for many, many years. He has since passed on, uh, but he was a heck of a dealer. Um, and there it is, and it was in the in the arms of the uh, uh, Theodorus van Riverhost collection. And uh, there's the uh, Chinese Porcelain Company label on the back. But Khalil was known for um, um, uh, dealing in things that were in pristine as possible condition. He, he really, especially with export pieces, he handled a lot of great export pieces. And uh, as you can see on this, this plate looks like it, it's, it's as fresh as it was the day it came out of the kiln. And for that reason, it did pretty well. It brought $1,302. But for a prime Yongshen example of this quality, I don't think that was a crazy price at all for this dish uh, because it was in such superb condition. All right. And uh, Chinese export collectors uh, really go after these uh, typically when they're, when they're in that good a shape. And then on to this, this very nice uh, a, a blue, blue and white immortal floating on a cloud carrying uh, uh, fronds or flowers. Uh, very good example. This is Chinese uh, uh, Wanli Tianqi period uh, uh, porcelain. It was a nice, nice piece. Here it is uh, on the back. It's got a, uh, it looks like a Jai Jing mark. And uh, it ended up selling for $1,405, which I think was perfectly, uh, perfectly reasonable for that. It was a very, very pretty plate and um, with a late Ming mark to boot. All right, and then over to this. This was that uh, Japanese dish that the seller had put up as Chinese. Um, and I can see why. I mean, you know, it's, Japanese and Chinese 
porcelains at times are often confused, and if you don't see a lot of them, it's perfectly understandable. I don't think he was. I don't think he was being duplicitous. I just think he thought it was probably Chinese. And uh, this was a nice one. It had some, a nicely done brown dressed rim, 18th century. Uh, had a little nick out right here, which is a pretty simple fix uh, in most cases. He showed a good picture of it. Here's the back of it with the Y-shaped spur marks, typical of 18th century Arita pieces. Um, very nicely done. And somebody picked this up for $124. That was a nice buy. That's a very, very pretty plate. Uh, has very nice use of space with the flowers, and uh, good on whoever got that. That was a nice thing. That's why I put it in the, I put it in the newsletter, just because I, I said uh, every, most people will recognize right away that it's Japanese, but, uh, but a very nice example, very good uh, cobalt color. And then over to this was the uh, Chinese um, a uh, bottle, silver bottle, sterling silver, a uh, uh, little decanter, liquor decanter, it looks like, or possibly it uses a tea caddy. But nice, uh, nice work on it. Nice low relief work. Uh, carve, the carving uh, uh, or the, the uh, chasing on it was very, very good. The silver all the way around looked to be in quite good shape. Somebody got a nice buy, $222 for a good looking piece of late 19th century Chinese silver. Very attractive. And then the book, um, we put books in occasionally if I see one that I think is particularly good uh, because they're handy to have. And, and most, most books, a lot of you may not know this, <clears throat> most art reference books only get printed once. Uh, and when they do, they go into the market, and that's the end of it because they don't sell a lot of them the first time around. Um, um, the, the few books that have had multiple printings are Marks, the, the famous book on Marks on Chinese porcelain because he keeps updating it and adding more value to it so it sells, so he, can, he can continue to sell them, which is wonderful. But some of them don't. And this is, this is one by Simon Kwan on Chinese Republic porcelain. Um, they have not reprinted. It was from a series collection. This was number six from a uh, Tang collection. And uh, it went for $251. And whoever bought it is going to be very happy they bought this in a couple of years because the price of this book just keeps going up and up and up and up. All right. And this book was in good condition with its, most importantly, its dust jacket. People love dust jackets on, on their books. All righty. And now let's uh, mosey on over and see a few things that are coming up this week. Whoop. There we go. There we are. Um, that page you just saw is a, is a, is a, is a, is a list of links that uh, will be populating onto the site uh, later today. All right, now, um, this is a very nice Kangxi bowl that's up right now. It's got nine days to go. It's just gone up. This is uh, Winter Konings. 25. He doesn't sell on here that often. He's been, on, he's been an eBay seller for quite a while, but he comes on occasionally and sells some things, and generally he sells very nice things. And he has this, this very nice early 18th century uh, dragon bowl with a nice high foot on it. Uh, here's a good shot of the bottom. It has a, a Ming mark, of course. It's not, but typically they did apply these marks to them all the time. And um, We'll see how that goes. It should it should do pretty well. He said it had some pre professional restoration done to it. So I would get a hold of him and ask what was restored. Because sometimes dealers put restored on it, and uh, it's it's pretty minor. But the word restore s s sends away quite a few people who never bother to check, and then they find out later that it was a, a, not a significant repair or not a particularly good repair um, that could be easily fixed, and they, they've lost out. Uh, we, we, he, we around here, we, for years and years and years in the 20s when they used to restore pieces, they'd spray them with this paint um, to cover up a hairline, for example, that might be an inch long. And we've had vases come in. This is in, in, important to keep an eye out for. We've had vases come in where the entire neck, maybe six inches of it, is covered in this paint, which has since discolored. And it makes it look like the whole neck was rebuilt or it's had some huge amount of restoration. Well, we had a bunch of these at one point, and for fun, we got some acetone and stripped all that paint and gunk off. And in virtually all of them, all they were doing was covering up maybe a one-inch hairline from the rim, something really trivial. And, uh, but they basically, over the years, I'm sure at the time it was done, it looked fine. But, but you know, 80, 100 years later, it looked discolored. And uh, uh, they were often sold, even in uh, the auction houses around here, Skinner's in Boston and others, they'd sell it as, you know, with extensive restoration. And it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It was just, it was just a, a, a badly done repair. So you want to check those whenever you see them. All right, and then on to this is this really nice Chunchi Chinese porcelain dish of the fort and wall scene. It's uh, got nine days to go. It just went up. That will be in the newsletter this week. 
And then, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Josh Chamberlain, Juice 1499, has got a sale up. He's got a lot of nice rose medallions. He's got some very interesting things. And uh, those will be in the newsletter this week. It closes on Monday. So uh, you want to check that sooner than later. Um, it went up last week after we did the newsletter. Uh, we added some of his listings over to the uh, um, eBay Today page, so, so folks would find it, and it'll be updated onto the newsletter uh, uh, page catalog on BitAmount uh, Today. All right, and uh, Josh also has this. I just like these. I think these are just so pretty and so beautifully shaped. A very nice pair of cloisonne vases, Meiji period, but very that very, very fine Meiji uh, cloisonne work on this. These are really pretty. And uh, those are those are uh, among the listings he has up. They're up to two hundred and three dollars. They've got some. They got a ways to go, but those are are, are very very nice. All righty. And uh, I hope you have a had a great week, and you're having a great weekend. It's supposed to be eighty degrees here uh, uh, today, and maybe uh, rain tonight. Nice tomorrow. I'm not sure, but. Um, I hope it's good where we are. We, we had snow last weekend, of all things. Uh, so uh, have a good weekend. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos. Uh, leave a comment. And uh, join us over at bitamount.com and check out the site and what we put on there that you might, you might find informative and useful. And uh, subscribe. All right. See you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.